Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 and 5 tutorial. So in today's video, what we're going to be going over is how to create a landscape auto material like you see on screen here. So what we're going to be going over in creating today is essentially a material which will allow us to paint either grass, rocks or sand or any textures you choose, but these are the ones which I have chosen so you can actually paint them on. And we're also going to have it automatically paint rock or cliff textures where we should have them. So if it gets past a certain angle, we're going to have it automatically paint this rock texture on here, as you can see here, like so. So this is what we're going over in creating today. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we want to import our textures. Now I've already got mine all imported here, but for you, what you're going to do is want to download them and just drag and drop them in to import them. I'm obviously using again three different ones. So I've got grass, sand and rock. And I'm using the base color, the normal, and the specular. You don't have to use those specific maps if you don't want, but make sure you definitely have the base color and normal. And I'd recommend specular as well. And you can maybe even use roughness, ambient occlusion, any ones that you want really. Obviously, the more you have, the more detailed it will be. So once you've got all your textures imported, we're going to right click and create a material. And I'm going to name this one Auto Landscape Matte for material like so. Well, that already exists for some reason. So let me just put one at the end like this and we'll open this up straight away. What we're gonna do in here, first things first, is go over to the left to, get, to give us some space, hold down T and left click three times so we can get three texture samples like so. I'm getting three texture samples because I have three different textures I'm using. Again, grass, sand, and rock. So if you're only using one or you're only using two, three, four, five, however many it is you're using, because you can use as many as you want, just get that amount of textures, it, texture samples in here. Then what we're gonna do, is set these to the ones we want. So at the moment, this is gonna be all the different textures we have, but the base color map of those. So what we're gonna do first is get the grass one, put that into that texture. Then I'm gonna do rock next. So we'll get rock here, and then I'll get sand like so. So now we have these in here. Then we're gonna right click and get landscape layer blend we have here. And we're gonna add three array elements on here. So one, two, three. I'm adding three because again, I have three different textures. Then we're gonna open up the index of all of these and we're gonna give them the names. So I have grass, rock, and sand. Last thing we want to do on here is we, want to also, is we also want to set the blend type of these to be LB height blend. Make sure you do that for all of them. And you should see now on our landscape layer blend node, we have layer grass and height grass, layer rock, height rock, layer sand and height sand, and again, for all the ones which you have. To connect these up, we're gonna get the RGB value going into just layer, and then the R value going into height. So obviously for grass, it's gone RGB into layer grass, and the red into height grass. I'm gonna do that for all of the layers which we have, and all the textures, like so. And what the layer blend node does, is this means we can now paint these textures on. So we can now paint on grass layer, rock layer, and sand layer, as these are the different layers we have. So I hope that all makes sense. And what we're gonna do is select all these, Control C and Control V to duplicate it. And I'm gonna duplicate this two more times as I have two other different texture maps. So again, I'm doing base color, specular, and normal. Again, to do this for as many different maps as you have. So we're just gonna change these over now. So again, for me, this is gonna be ground or grass specular, then rock, specular and sand specular like so and then for the final one it will just be the normal so grass normal and then rock normal and finally last but not least sand normal so now we have our base color our specular and our normal maps all in here like so i'm just going to move these up a little bit and then we have these here now the next step is we want to be able to control the uv tiling of these so that's actually very, very simple. We're gonna to come to the left of all of these, right click and get a texture coordinate node, as this is what actually allows us to manipulate the UVs. Underneath this, we're gonna hold down S and left click to get a scalar parameter. And I'm gonna name this one grass tiling, as this is also the tiling for the grass texture. Then I'm gonna hold down M and left click to get a multiply with A being the texture coordinate and B being our new scalar parameter we just created. And this multiply wants to go into the UV of the texture sample for our grass. So we're gonna go up to the top, UVs of the grass there, 
and this wants to go in all three different maps we have or however many again you have but we're going to connect them all in there like so and we obviously want to do this for as many different textures as we have so i'm going to do it another two times all we're going to do now is just change the name of the parameter from grass to rock or again whatever else you have and i should also mention sorry we need to set the default value of these parameters to be one you can leave it at zero but one would just look a lot better in this preview up here this is then going to go into obviously the rock that we have so let me get those in there like so the final rock down here and then one more for me which is going to be obviously my sand tiling so we'll get sand into the UVs there like so I'm just going to straighten these up as well just because I like to keep it looking nice and organized so now we can manipulate the UV tilings of our different layers as well which is very important for landscapes as these can get very big so they can get very tily very quickly which is obviously going to look very repetitive so what I'm going to do next is I want to now start setting up the auto cliff material so for me I'm just using the same rock material for the cliffs you can do that as well or you can use a different material if you wanted I'm just doing both as I want the cliffs to be done automatically but I also want to be able to paint that layer on as well myself so what we're going to do for this is we want to just get three text coordinates again so I'm just going to copy and paste these from here uh, that's texture samples sorry not texture coordinates we want three texture coordinates and we're going to set these to be our rock ones again so let me just get rock color rock specular and rock normal once we've got that we're going to do the UV tiling again so let me just get the rock one here copy and paste this over but I'll rename it to cliff now because I'm using the same texture I could just connect in the rock one in here as well however you may again want it to be maybe slightly different tilings on the cliffs than on the rocks so just in case you do want that variation I'm going to put that in there like so then after these texture samples what we're going to do is hold down L and left click to get a lerp and we want three of those or again one for each different texture sample with the RGB going into A of each of these lerps like so now the B value of these lerps wants to be the appropriate texture map going into these so what I mean by that is this is the base color so B wants to be the layer blend of our base color connecting in like that so hope that makes sense and then B for the specular one obviously wants to be specular here and normal wants to be normal so we now connected all those in like this I'm going to move this down ever so slightly just so it's all centered like this and then for the alpha of these what we want to do is right click and we want to get a world aligned blend node and the alpha of this will be the alpha of the first two lerps so for base color and specular but then for normal the alpha is going to be with explicit normal like this so we now have our world aligned blend it's going to be actually controlling the values for our auto landscape material now the values I'm using for this are ones which I got off of the Unreal forums ages and ages ago but the ones which I'm still using and obviously you can mess about with these to get perfect values for you just change them to see what works best for you but again I'm just going to be using these so I'm going to hold down one left click to get a constant or you can do a scalar parameter again if you wanted to and actually you know what I think I will do that so I'll hold down S left click to get a scalar parameter and I'm just going to name this one blend sharpness that's obviously going to go into the blend sharpness the default value of this I'm going to set to 1 as that's the value I got from the forums and then hold down S left click again to get another parameter naming this one blend bias and that's obviously going to be connected into the blend bias and this has a default value of minus 2.2 and that is now our world line blend node set up which will then be working for our auto material and now there's really not a lot left to do all we need to do now is out of the specular lerp here what we're going to do is hold on M left click to get a multiply with A going to the lerp and B is once again going into another scalar parameter this one is going to be specular amount so we can then just change the specular amount of our landscape default value of this is again just going to be one nice and simple like so now all that's left to do is connect them in so the lerp of the base color is going to go into base color of our material the multiply from the specular will go into specular and the lerp from the normal will go into normal like this let me just move this material over and now we should have 
our material fully functioning, working and set up for us. So if we hit apply and save, you can also see in our preview here, this is looking pretty good. We have our rock material on here. So it's not black, it's then working now. So we're going to close this and what you can do now is create a new landscape for, to put this on or what I'm going to do is put it on a landscape I've already got. So first things first, we want to actually create our material instance for this. So if we go to our content browser, right click on our material, then create material instance. We'll open that up, but we're going to come back to it later on. But you can see this is where you can change all these scalar parameters we've been setting up. So if you were to create a new landscape, what you're going to do is go to landscape, then just change around all the values you want. And somewhere around here, you should have somewhere where you can input the material, which is what you're going to then want to do. For me, again, I'm just going to select my current landscape and change material on that. So let me just do this like so. And I'm going to change it to be the auto landscape material instance that we have there. And as you should see, we have something like this. Now this obviously looks absolutely terrible at the moment, but we're not quite done yet. What we need to do now is go back into our landscape, go to paint, and we need to create some layer info for our layers. But you'll see now we do have our layers here. So we have grass, rock, and sand, which are the layers we set up in our material. If we press the little plus here, we can then create a non-weight blended layer. We'll just save that wherever you want it to be. And we're gonna do that for all of these. And you'll see we just did it for the grass and the grass already now looks a lot better. And we'll do that for all of the different layers which we have. And you'll notice this starts to look, come together and look a lot nicer. What we're gonna do now is open up our material instance and start changing the values to make it look even nicer. So I'm just gonna make this a little smaller, not that small obviously, but so I can still see it while also seeing my landscape on screen as well. So what we're gonna do is just look here and if we tick all of these, we can then start to mess about with all these different values. So actually let me move it over a little bit more so I can see it better. So let's start off with the specular amount. As you'll notice, it's very, very shiny and reflective. So if we set that to zero, we're going to have none. If we set it to one, we're going to have all of it. So I think 0.2 is going to be a good value for me. The grass tiling, let's set it to zero. You'll notice again, we've got this, set one, like that. 0.5, we're going to have something different, 0.2. And the best way to look at the tiling really is just get on ground level. Because from up above, it's always going to look pretty repetitive unless you've got very good material. So if you get onto ground level, this is what the player is going to see. Does it look repetitive from down here? Not really. So this will be fine for me. And I'm just going to do that for all of the same ones on here. So all of these different textures will have the same tiling for me. And again, you'll notice as we change the cliff tiling, that already immediately looks a lot better. We can see it more pronounced and more clearly now. And let's also change the blend sharpness and blend bias. See what this is going to look like. So minus 2.2 on the blend bias turns everything into a cliff. 2.2 times nothing. Zero as we had it is like this. Sharpness set up to 2, 0, 1. Again, you will notice just changing these values will give us all these different effects like this. So really just change and mess about with these values to get what it is that you want. So you'll notice how easy it is to again just change all these to see the changes being made and see how you want it all to look. What we can do is save this and I'll close that so I think that is going to be fine for me. Now what we can do is make these sharper to make it more pronounced or you'll notice as well as I'm getting closer it's easier to see. Also, this texture isn't the best for this, I guess, because this is actually pretty green of a texture as well anyway. So it is blending in quite well too. But regardless of that, we do have it. But we'll also notice we can paint in our rock. Once we do, we'll obviously have to prepare the shades again. But we can paint in our rock and our sand on here as well. So we just paint in sand around the edge of the lake here, like this. And it's not too pronounced, but if we select the grass, hold shift and paint, we're gonna remove the grass material or the grass texture from this which will then make these a lot more pronounced like so. And this obviously is starting to come together and look a lot better now. And again, this might not look too great for you, but that's because I'm just doing this very, very quickly. I'm not spending a lot of time on it at all. I'm just doing it quickly just to show you the basics of how it all works. And if I were to just go to some empty space and start sculpting, we should see that the rock material is gonna just come up and start appearing as I increase the height of it like so. So again, you'll notice we've immediately then just got our rock texture here like this. And I've just remembered one thing is if we go back into our material, the default value for the blend sharpness should actually be seven, not one. So sorry about that. And in the blend bias, I accidentally sent the slider min to minus 2.2, not the default value to minus 2.2. So if we do that as well, 
then we'll see what this looks like and I'm just going to untick these for the moment and now you'll notice it looks a whole lot better so very sorry about that I knew something was kind of wrong so again sorry about that but you'll notice now this does look a whole lot better those values I put in were slightly wrong ever so slightly but now you'll notice when we paint it we're going to get the rocks they're a lot more pronounced and it just looks a whole lot nicer for what we are meant to have than what we did have a second ago so we've got something which looks like this so I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do. We've created our own landscape material in which we can paint on grass, rock and sand. And we also have an auto part of this material which will automatically paint on the rock or cliff textures when it gets past a certain angle like this. So we're going to see the rocks automatically appear as you saw when, when painting and sculpting over there as well. So thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.